Uh, we're talking with Alyssa Parrish. She's the wife of Paul Parrish. Paul Parrish makes the um, tape looms, and Alyssa is masterfully creating something, weaving on her tape loom. So, uh, could you sort of walk me through, talk me through um, what it is that you're doing, please? This is a finished product, similar to what I have That's, on there now. Uh, could you hold it up and I'll yes. get a closer close-up of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could probably make all kinds of different designs you on can. it. You can. I have various designs here on the table and I have another design on the loom right behind this piece. Okay. And there's a a pattern sheet that you can follow for the the different um, patterns you want to make. There's some there. But to start out with it, you cut your thread and then you would tie it off on the back here. The back set of nails or brads correlates to the slots here. The ones in the front correlate to the holes. There's just holes here at the top to make it easier to thread your area through. So you're going to tie it off there, and then you would be bringing it all out straight in front of you, making sure all the pieces are together. And then there's a stop over here to hold that. But um, these are kind of, this is, she's anything one of this. Winding it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To where I'm ready to start oh, moving. Oh, no! I like that! Now, Bill gets hold of them and caution. This is the oh. gorgeous. And you'll see then that some are in the holes, some are in the slots, and as I raise and lower them, they're separated. And this is called the shed. Shed, S H E D. S H E D. In between here, yes, sir. Oh, I like it. Isn't that nice? These are So I'm leaving 18. a little piece yeah, over right here. Yeah. <laughs> I know I separated them yeah. there. This is just tapping that down. Isn't that pretty? The Irish name is like that. to the side. And taking that back over to the other side. Okay. And leave a little piece there. Yeah. Raise it up, and that will separate them again. And bring that over to that side. And while that is there, can I bring to this other side and pull my little string piece through there so I can tighten my tension down so my edges are even. Tap it down, tighten it up, take it through, leave the little piece again, raise it up, and you always know that, okay, this little piece is on this side, so I need know that I'm going to go from, from the left to the right, then. so that I'm going to raise, slide it through, tap it down, Pull it tight. Bring that through. Tap it down. Back up. And it's best if you slide your shuttle through here because that way you know that you're separating your threads so you get all the threads up. Oh, I mean going all the way up to the wall there. Yes, sure. going all the way up to the wall there. Because see, if I do down here, it's easy for me to get in between the yes, threads. But yes. I can do it you right there. You might not there. notice. Right. Now, when you're really, really going full speed, Alyssa, uh -huh. how many, how long would it take you to do an inch? Like, I mean, how fast would you do it? Maybe about five minutes then to an inch. Okay. And traditionally, Lissa, what purposes were the, uh, the, tapes. the tape used for? Okay. Tapes could be used as a garter to tie up your stockings. It could be used as a strap for a powder horn. 
It can be used to tie a bag shut. It can be used for decorative purposes on a garment. It can be used to trim a cap, a hat, um, tie curtains back. Anything that you need is something a little bit stronger than just a single string. But to start out with, I didn't tell you about how you would make a loop there, just a, a knot to tie it in the end. This one I went ahead and untied, but it's not going to come apart now. Well, it must be, the way that, it, that it's woven, it probably makes it very durable. Right. So that it'll last uh, whatever uh, purpose that you use it for. Uh, it's going to it's going to last a long time. If it's for a powder horn or if it's right. for whatever it is. Yeah. Because it is. It's nice and strong. Yeah. It's cotton thread and it's just, it's strong. And then when you would get finished, just cut it. Cut it here because you really can't weave back there. So you would be finished here. Just cut it off and tie a knot in it. Mm -hmm. When you're finished with the length, this length yes. from here, you can always add extra thread to here. And to do that, then, let's see where I'm at here. You would leave a piece out. And you'd have just a couple double threads where you would start afresh so it'd be strong. And then once it's done, you're just going to trim those edges and it's stuck inside. Wow. But there are all different so sorts of patterns. I have the pattern sheet with this book here by Bonnie Wider. She did one on tape looms past and present. It's no longer a book that's available. It's a DVD. Um. Now, uh, Paul was saying that uh, he'd made uh, somewhere close to 80 looms. 78. 78, <laughs> and, seven, count, 78 seven, and counting. 78 and counting, because what he does is, on the bottom of each of them, he numbers as to the year on this side, his touch mark, and what number. This is number 32 of this style, Mifflin. Um, this one would have a different number on the bottom of it. Because this is the Mercer. It, this yeah. is a which? A Mercer. And he named it because of what it relates to. This one he saw a picture of in the Mercer Museum in okay. Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Okay. This is number eight. Excuse me. This is number 13. 13 of the Mercers. The Mifflin. He calls it the Mifflin because it's patterned after this one. Thomas and Sarah Mifflin. He was the first governor of Pennsylvania, and he looked at the picture, and you can see how the picture relates to that one. Yes. This little one over here is the Marion. It's from Marion County, West Virginia, Okay. around Fairmont. He actually got to see the real first loom there. There was the Judy Wilson, she's a textile lady from Prickett's Fort. She went to a yard sale and she bought it, I think for like five bucks. And the lady says, oh, you're gonna put some, glue some flowers in that, make it a table arrangement. She says, no ma'am, I know what that is and I'm gonna use it for its intended purpose. Beautiful. It had little dovetails on the side of it. Mm -hmm. And Judy took it to uh, WVU, and they were able to date it back to seven, I can't remember the exact year, but 1700 something. Beautiful. Yeah. And this is a little piece of tape that was made on this loom. By, not by me, unfortunately, because this, this is beautiful. Um, a young lady who bought a, a Marion loom, she made that and sent it to Paul. Now, with all the, the looms that, uh, Paul's looms that are in circulation, and uh, he said that many of them are being used uh, by people to make tape. Right. Then uh, you probably, and, and then they, a lot of times people will show him what they've made. And so you've probably seen a lot of interesting patterns, or creative oh. patterns that have come off Paul's looms. There's a weaver, actually there's, he calls them the woolies, but a bunch of his weavers wanted him to make one that had another set of holes here. And he said, if I can document that they had it in the 18th century, I will make it. But if I can't document it, I won't do it. Well, he could find documentation, so he made one of his weaver customers one with two sets of holes here. And that'll just give him a different pattern. 
I see. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I'm not that far advanced yet. <laughs> yeah. So you are also self-taught with the yes, with the weaving? Yes, very yeah. much self-taught. Um, from Bonnie's book and from there's um, Eleanor Biddle. She has a, a YouTube video that we watch. She's an a older lady with a lot of looms. So I've watched her. And then some of the weavers, they'll give me hints like they're the ones that told me to leave this little loop here. I was always pulling it real tight when I went through this. Is leave that loop there, and then when you come back over, then pull it, because that way you can make sure your tension is equal all the way down. Beautiful. And, uh, and it's just the practice, getting the hands on, feeling comfortable with it. And the tension. This one you can see she has it tied off somewhere so that it doesn't slide on the table. See that ribbon yes. right there? I usually have mine on the table, and it sometimes it'll slide. Uh, Paul has one out there that he calls it the Maria Nolte. It was patterned after a, another portrait he saw of Maria Nolte, and it has feet in the back, and that's so it can hook on the edge of the table, and that gives you better Stability. There. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, but the Mifflin is my favorite because it's very portable. I can tuck it under my arm. Yes. I can carry it this way by the there, or if need be, I carry it by this. Well, it's just I like it. It's my favorite. <laughs> Beautiful. And there's no wasted thread with this one. This is the wasted part here. On here, from here to here is going to be your wasted thread because you're weaving here in the front. On this one, I can weave all the way up to there, so that's just my wasted area. Okay. But each one's different. It comes from different areas of the country, and it it's just unique to the, the area and the person. I first had this one. Originally, he had made, the first one he made was for our daughter, because she wanted one, and he says, I'm never going to make any more. He says, there's such a pain in the neck, I'm never going to make any more. <laughs> well, he made that one for me, and he's working on all these other ones. And he comes in one day and shows me this tiger maple. And I says, oh my golly, I said, is that beautiful? And he says, well, look at it. And I looked and I says, oh, he made it for Aaron, Aaron Parrish. I thought, for our daughter. He says, no. He says, look on the bottom of it. So that's when I turned it over. And he has there for my wife, Elissa Parrish. From my hands with love, Paul E. Parrish, 2013. Beautiful. So I knew that was for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I do like this one. But Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. You're welcome. Thank you.